everyone and welcome back to Scandalous Media. It's Angela here and my god. I never thought these two would stoop this low. I usually don't get bothered about situations or celebrity drama, I just love to talk about it with you guys, but this is a situation worth getting mad at, especially when it's a story about literally faking a car chase to draw public sympathy by using your husband's dead mother. What? That's what it comes down to. I'm gonna explain everything about Meghan and Harry's alleged car chase in New York City after they left the Miss Foundation Awards with Meghan's mother, Doria, and I'm gonna break down their five main lies, including the New York Police Department, aka NYPD, exposing them, the cab driver exposing their lies, the mayor of New York City basically calling them liars, Backgrid exposing them, all while showing you footage of their lies. So get yourself seated, grab yourself a hot drink or a cold one, and get ready for this recap. Also, let me know if you guys want a separate video on the Miss Foundation event that these clowns attended through a car rental agency, Megan's weird speech, and of course, the forced lovey-dovey photos. And now, we get to the good part. The part where Harry and Meghan dramatize and almost fake a car chase to equate them with Princess Diana's fatal car crash. The car chase story originated when a spokesperson for Meghan and Harry, aka someone from their team, aka them, released an official statement saying there was a car chase. The story didn't originate from the police, or witnesses, or videos, it came out of thin air. Meghan and Harry's mouthpiece Omid Scoby, who claims he's not their mouthpiece, tweeted, Last night, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Doria Ragland were involved in a terrifying paparazzi car chase involving six blacked out vehicles in a chase that could have been fatal. Right off the bat, we already know what comparisons are going to be drawn, and once again, here we have them focusing on the bad that could have happened, but didn't. The statement officially read, Last night, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Miss Ragland were involved in a near-catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. This relentless pursuit lasting over two hours resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD officers. While being a public figure comes with a level of interest from the public, it should never come at the cost of anyone's safety. Dissemination of these images, given the ways in which they were obtained, encourages a highly intrusive practice that is dangerous to all involved. Sorry, but <laughs> we have to laugh. Obviously, the situation isn't funny if it were true, but what's funny is how confident they are lying on a grand public stage. Lying about a chase, lying about almost collisions, pedestrians being hurt, and two NYPD officers being hurt. All things that did not happen as the NYPD exposes. And what dissemination of images? These, where it looks like Megan is trying so hard not to look extremely happy that she is being photographed? Look at that slick little smile. This is someone who's scared because she's in the middle of a car chase? Or how about Doria who looks unmoved by the situation, just chilling on her phone? Or Harry who's recording for what, to post it on his vlog channel or something? What does he even do nowadays? Or how about the lack of seatbelts that aren't on from the group that's in such a scary car chase? They don't want to spread these photos because it combats their lies with Megan's posh little pose. No one here looks sad, except for Harry who looks irritated because he's someone that has real trauma from this. Trauma that I can't help but believe Megan exploits his trauma and uses it to her advantage. I can never get over this scene from their episode 2 Netflix soap opera which I covered where Megan is looking all around and basically faking a paparazzi chase, also in New York City, and look at her staring Harry down as if she's waiting for him to notice and waiting for his triggers to kick in. This is a real scene. Just like she was looking at him with eyes of control on Netflix, she sits in this taxi cab looking as if everything went as planned. Also, Omid Scobi has the nerve to tweet, King Charles and Queen Camilla and Prince William and Princess Kate have declined to comment. I understand that no member of the royal family has reached out to the Sussexes since today's news broke four hours ago. Is that so? Reach out to them for what? They were in traffic and they had their photo taken. There is nothing to say to people who fake everything as we will see in this video. But of course their mouthpiece wants to update us on every little thing behind closed doors. So much for privacy. 
Do you know how much of a compulsive liar you have to be to the point where the NYPD exposes you? Julian Phillips, the Deputy Commissioner of Public Information, said in an official statement, On Wednesday evening, May 16th, the NYPD assisted the private security team protecting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. There were numerous photographers that made their transport challenging. The Duke and Duchess arrived at their destination and there were no reported collisions, summonses, injuries, or arrests in regard. First of all, you can just say Harry and Meghan. This isn't the UK, this is America, where two formal royals turned reality stars are now living. We Americans don't care about your royal title, but I just know Meghan doesn't allow anyone to refer to her as anything but the Duchess of Sussex since she's clearly not a princess. So there were no collisions or injuries. So why did Harry and Meghan's statement make sure to say that there were multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD officers? Multiple? Really? Wow, what must great luck you have to not avoid one, not two, but multiple near collisions. One that even involves NYPD officers. I'm a New Yorker, if you don't know, and if there is someone or something causing any sort of near collision, the NYPD would step in to isolate the situation or even summon someone or arrest them. People get arrested in New York for almost anything and we have a lot of crazy going on here. People get arrested for jumping the $2 turnstile in the subways, so do you think the NYPD would just sit here risking getting into a near-death collision without doing something? Not once does the NYPD use the word near-fatal or near-catastrophic the way Harry and Meghan do. Only Meghan and Harry would claim to be involved in a two-hour car chase in New York City only for the NYPD to say that the transportation was challenging, as anyone who drives in New York would know, and there were no incidents, crashes, or arrests. Transportation is always challenging in New York. It's New York. There's literally traffic at 2 a.m. The NYPD also told NBC New York that they have no information about any incident involving Harry and Meghan, but they received a lot of calls on it. Yeah, it's Meghan calling to make sure the papers picked up the story. <laughs> but NBC writes that they haven't even been able to verify that the incident took place. And a high-ranking source told the New York Post and reiterated the NYPD's statement that cops had no collision reports or 911 calls related to the chase. We only had one car as part of this. The chase definitely wasn't two hours, the high-ranking source told the Post. New York Mayor Eric Adams reacted to the claims that Harry and Meghan were involved in a near-catastrophic car chase, saying, uh, I would find it hard to believe that there was a two-hour high-speed chase. That would be, I uh, find it hard to believe, but we will find out the exact duration of it. So essentially, he's saying that they're liars if they're claiming there was a two-hour car chase, and he's saying that he doesn't believe that. Why? New York City is one of the most monitored cities with police surveillance literally everywhere. So when there is no footage or credible witnesses in a city where millions of people live so closely together, well, like Eric Adams said, I would find it hard to believe. It gets even funnier. The NYPD can be seen in this video making a right after Harry and Meghan's cab leaves. So no, there wasn't a paparazzi car chase, and all you see here are paparazzi taking photos of them, as they do to everyone, let alone in New York City. But look, their car leaves. No one follows them. The paparazzi doesn't even follow them. And if they were in a dangerous situation, why would the police leave them? Also, you cannot expect to be in a high-profile city like New York, especially post an event, and avoid the paparazzi. The paparazzi also have a job, one that the celebrity relies on to stay relevant. One that Meghan has used multiple times, if not every time. She is well known to stage photos and tip off the paparazzi as exposed by the paparazzi who have taken photos of her. At the florist, she literally was there. She was, she honestly facilitated. She posed up for us. She smiled at us, um, me and the other guy I was working with. And we got such a beautiful set of pictures. She talked to us. Has Meghan tipped off photographers since she's been with Harry? Um, I, I'm going to have to say no comment. <laughs> yeah. No comment. Well, that's not a no. I'm just going to have to say no comment. <laughs> gotcha. That's actually really interesting. If, all right, um, I'm, I'm going to say that's, that says a lot. Sure, it's annoying and the flashes in your eyes, but Megan does not look the slightest bit annoyed here. And anytime the paparazzi caught her, she has a smile that is from cheek to cheek. Look at all these grins. And guess what? It comes with celebrity status, especially one after an event. 
If you should be expected to be photographed anywhere, it's at and after an event. Don't want to be photographed? Stay home. Don't attend. This is the equivalent of complaining about being photographed on a red carpet. Meghan and Harry don't know what it's like to be real A-listers who actually get hounded by the paparazzi on a regular night out. Take Justin and Hailey Bieber for example. They live in LA and are often in New York, so the paparazzi are catching them every second of the day, and Flash is always in their eyes 24-7. They don't have to be leaving an event to get photographed. This is just a regular day to day. Meghan and Harry leave their premises once every month with arrangements to get photographed, and we don't hear the end of it. The Prince and Princess of Wales were in the US and were photographed everywhere, but we didn't hear of a dramatic car chase for them. Sunny Singh was the one driving Harry and Meghan. They seemed like nice people, but they didn't really say anything, he recalled. And next thing you know, Prince Harry and his wife were hopping into my cab. Not even a thank you or a hi, how are you? Interesting. Megan specifically strikes me as someone who doesn't talk to service workers because in her head, she's too much of a VIP. Now pay attention because this story is interesting. Sunny says that as they traveled a block, they got blocked by a garbage truck. And that's when the paparazzi came and started taking pictures. So it wasn't on the highway for a car chase. They were literally blocked by a garbage truck, which is common in New York, especially with the narrow streets. Dramatic Harry and Meghan saw the paparazzi and just as they were about to tell Sunny the location they wanted to be taken to. They were just about to give me the location where they were gonna go, but then they told me to circle back to the precinct. Can you imagine? Ooh, paparazzi taking your photos as a garbage truck stalls you. And so then you say, take me to the police station. Really? I... Like girl, there is crime in New York. We have a homeless people issue. We have real problems and you want to go to the police station because the paparazzi are taking your picture one block away from the events you just left? This is how you know they are D-listers at heart. No A-lister acts like this. The cab driver said they looked nervous as if they were being chased the whole day, but their security guard was on it. Poor Sonny. He doesn't know they had just attended an event and were finally being photographed at an event and not in the middle of a hike where the paparazzi is always called. Here's where he calls them liars. When asked about the description of a near catastrophic chase, he said, you know, the, you know, the, the near catastrophic event. Oh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think that's all you know, exaggerated and stuff like that. So don't read too much into that. You didn't see any cars going over curbs or people banging on oh, your Oh, I didn't see that. No, no. He also said, I don't think I would call it a chase. I never felt like I was in danger. It wasn't like a car chase in a movie. They were quiet and seemed scared, but it's New York, it's safe. As far as you were concerned, when they were in your taxi, you know, what, did you feel like you were in danger? No, no, danger? It's not. New York City is the safest place to be, right? There's police stations, there's cops on every corner, so there's no need to be afraid in New York. He said that Harry and Meghan's security did more talking and that he seemed really hyper, but I don't think he was from New York. The security guard he's talking about, Chris Sanchez, is a member of Harry and Meghan's security detail and he told CNN that he believed the paparazzi's actions put the public in danger, claiming that there were about a dozen vehicles, cars, scooters, and bicycles chasing them. Are you sure it wasn't just pedestrians? Even though there is no proof of this, and Sonny the cab driver says that there were only about six paparazzi who came up to the car. This is important because Harry and Meghan have their sources lying to the press, with one source telling TMZ the pursuit was at its most intense on the FDR drive, and that their SUV had to go 80 miles per hour to shake the paparazzi, and the entire thing ended at midnight, so two hours later making their spokesperson accurate. Sure, Jan. Let's believe their mouthpieces over unbiased sources like the NYPD, the mayor, and the sweet cab driver. Chris Sanchez also claims that the paparazzi were jumping curbs and passing red lights. Oh really? All this and the police didn't arrest them? Do you know how much a ticket is for passing a red light in New York? You breathe in New York and you get a ticket. Take it from me, especially in Manhattan. Sunny also said that the police weren't following them. They only helped them when they were blocked by a trash truck. So they honked and then they went their way and we went our way. That's the context behind this footage, especially this part where you see a sanitation worker on the side with the garbage. But of course, Megan and Harry saw that and said, let's create a scene where they can relate me to your dead mother. And if the paparazzi were running these red lights, why weren't they stopped by the police we see here? Oh, this story just keeps on crumbling for them. Especially when the photo agency they are known to work with exposes them after Harry and Meghan attempted to throw them under the bus. The first thing Meghan and Harry wanted to do with their statement is say they don't want the photo spread because this encourages highly intrusive behavior, which no it doesn't, but okay. 
In Backred's official statement, they said that there were a total of four photographers, three in cars, and one riding a bicycle. So there weren't a dozen cars like their hired security said. Backgrid also defends their photographers saying, they have a professional responsibility to cover newsworthy events and personalities, including public figures such as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. They also said that the photographers report that one of the four SUVs from Harry's security escort was driving in a manner that could be perceived as reckless. They even state that the vehicle was seen blocking off streets and in one video, it is shown being pulled over by the police. Ooh, I like this. They're basically saying, actually, you're the problem. And the cherry on top is this. We do, however, want to point out that according to the photographers present, there were no near collisions or near crashes during this incident. The photographers have reported feeling that the couple was not in immediate danger at any point. As we can see here by Megan's posh pose and smile, Harry being fine enough to record on his phone, and Doria on her phone. So how many lies did they tell so far? Number one, saying it was a near catastrophic crash. Meanwhile, the NYPD and the photographers present say otherwise. Number two, saying there were over a dozen cars following them. Meanwhile, there were only three cars and one bike with four photographers total, according to Backgrid, who is responsible for the photos. Number three, saying there were multiple near collisions and near crashes involving NYPD and pedestrians. Meanwhile, the NYPD states there were no collisions, crashes, or reports, and the incident couldn't even be verified. Backgrid also says that didn't happen. Number four, saying they were involved in a car chase. The cab driver says there was no car chase and the NYPD couldn't verify a car chase in a city that has surveillance on every corner. Number five, Saying that the car chase was two hours long, meanwhile the mayor says that's hard to believe, especially knowing New York traffic, it's very hard to swerve or chase anyone or even go at that high speed, and with two hours you can run through the entire city like three times. Meghan and Harry have been to New York multiple times, and they always travel in black SUVs. They even arrived at the awards with not only an SUV entourage, but in a black SUV themselves. They also left the event in a black SUV, as you can see here. But then they went around the corner and got a yellow taxi cab, a color you don't miss, and public transportation, with no tinted windows. Can they explain why? Why get in the taxi cab to begin with? Since the day it was announced they were dating, the Diana card has been played. It's ridiculous and it's sick. The obsession with trying to recreate a tragic event that happened to the late Princess Diana is low. Since 2016, Meghan has been begging for the tragic comparisons. Even TMZ writes about Princess Diana's crash in the article, talking about them because this is the angle Meghan has always wanted for herself. Even the mayor of New York says, I don't think there's many of us who don't recall how his mom died, which is again drawing a correlation to Diana. And now a source close to the two clowns has told the media that Prince Harry says being chased by paparazzi for more than two hours was the closest I have ever felt to understanding what happened on the night Diana died. Liar! He apparently told friends that the incident could have been fatal and they were both very shaken up. Did it feel like the paparazzi were being aggressive? aggressive? No, 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 no. They were behind us. I mean, they stayed on top of us. That was pretty much it. There was nothing more, you know? They kept their distance. It's just like journalists, just like everybody else trying to get pictures, make a quick buck. You didn't see any cars going over curbs or people banging on oh, your Oh, I didn't window. see that. No, 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 no. This Diana card has been played since they started dating. Just days after the news of them dating was leaked, Megan reportedly forced Harry's hand to write a statement saying he was scared for her safety. And then again in 2019 saying, his deepest fear is history repeating itself and I lost my mother and now I watch my wife falling victim to the same powerful forces. That is not true at all. Even on Netflix, every single memory was a Diana comparison. A Diana parallel. Everything that Diana went through. Magically, a D-list American actress who had to stage photos and beg for attention when she started dating a prince also went through it. What a coincidence that the woman who has been exposed for having an obsession with your mother has also magically gone through everything she's gone through. It's sick. It's a cheap attack, and maybe Harry for once in his life should think about his brother and how reenactments of his mother's death 
are not only hurtful, but deeply disrespectful. Those are all the facts laid out. I think that Harry, and more specifically Meghan, are deeply disturbed. First of all, I find it interesting that the paparazzi found Harry and Meghan after they got in the taxi and got blocked off by a garbage truck. The cab driver says there were about six of them and the photos were all taken by Backgrid. It seems like someone tipped them off and I think that someone was Meghan, who was sitting posed, almost waiting for the tip to go through. I mean, forgive me, but she's tipped them off before, did she not? Second of all, if Meghan and Harry, out of all the high-profile politicians and celebrities who stay or live in New York, can cause this much of a security threat, why would anyone want to invite them anywhere ever again? Taylor Swift, who is one of the biggest artists on the planet right now, and has 20,000 fans waiting for her outside of a stadium, while she performs to 70,000 fans inside. If she can not only live, but also casually go to New York and get photographed in the midst of a high-profile breakup, but manage not to get chased by the paparazzi, Yet you want me to believe that these two losers, with no credibility, were chased? Someone is lying. Megan Kelly tweets, I lived in Manhattan for 17 years and it is not possible to have a two hour car chase there. Too many street lights, stop signs, too much foot slash car traffic, and hundreds of places you could safely pull over to protect yourself. Caitlyn Jenner also said, I have been party to paps following me in New York, definitely not two hours and plenty of evidence, kind of the point since they have cameras. LA, even in a city with lots of driving and long distances between destinations, not two hours. And again, lots of evidence. It comes with the territory. Wine, wine, wine is all these two seem to do. A New Yorker makes a good point tweeting, a note. Right now, during the day with worse traffic, it takes 35 minutes to drive from the top of Manhattan to the bottom. At night, it would be less. To drive for two hours in Manhattan, you could go from the top of the island to bottom and back. Twice. Yeah, Manhattan isn't that big by the way. That's all I got for you guys. This is everything that went down, everyone that came out to expose them, and the five major lies told. I don't think anyone wants to see them at an event ever again, and I can safely say we New Yorkers are sick of them and their lies. A car chase in New York City? We wish traffic can even move so we can go the speed limit, let alone reach levels required for a chase. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below and let me know if you want me to cover the Miss Foundation Awards with this forced speech, fake glares of love, and more. Like and subscribe for more videos each week, turn on the bell notifications to be alerted of the live chats, follow us on our social media, and as always, I'll see you next time.